So as a bonus, we uh, since we mentioned the opera game uh, of Paul Morphy uh, in our video that we just made, uh, we decided we would show our viewers what the opera game was. So if you're not familiar with it, uh, you can uh, you can also know uh, chess's most famous game. It's not too difficult to to memorize. Uh, again, it is uh, Paul Morphy. Uh, often cited as the best chess player of all time. So the man, the myth, the legend, the man, the myth, the legend. So it starts out with uh, uh, E4, E5, uh, bringing the knight in. And then black plays what we call the Philidor defense by going and decides, oh, I'm going to pin that knight. Yep. And uh, if, if you uh, don't play the Philidor defense, then good job and just don't play the defilador defense yeah it's i think in the higher echelons of chess it's not super popular because it's it's just not very yeah. solid to help development and that that take has to happen there at this point in time because if that happens then white gets to capture with tempo and it's just it's just bad yep um so this happens no and this is all why it's really weak because then we get this and Ugh. we're threatening we're threatening mate so now the knight comes out to neutralize that threat. And Morphe jumps over here. Oh, so now he's attacking here as well as here. Yeah. So two the double threat. You can't you can't devastating. Uh, yeah. So then And I have been fortunate enough to play against the Philidor defense and get my pieces into this position. This was actually even before knowing what the opera game was. That's so cool. All right, so black recognizes this threat as the worst of the two, so this yeah. pawn's now hanging. And I'm sure something very similar happened to me in my game, and what I did was the very sensible thing, which is taking this pawn. That mm -hmm. seems like just an obvious move. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Paul Morphy, uh, the madman that he was, uh, <laughs> again, we said he likes developing his pieces, and he says, you know what? I don't, I don't need this. I don't need to be threatening this rook. Instead, I, I want to go for something bigger. I want to go, I want to go for, for a bigger attack. Yep. And so then Black's like, okay, well, since you didn't take it, and now you can't take it, and now I'm shutting down the knight maneuvers. Yep. And then uh, in terms of developing for a bigger attack, okay, well, now we're going to pin that, that knight to the queen, mm -hmm. uh, which is just setting myself up for a bigger attack. Okay, and now Black's like, okay, well, since you've done that, now you're going to lose a minor piece, maybe. And Paul Morphy says, I don't care. <laughs> Take my <laughs> minor piece. And then you get check with tempo, and there's so much pressure coming down the side that yes. it, it's incredible what happens. I mean, this, this knight is pinned to the queen. You have check here, and the queen is bearing down over here, and he could castle either side. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, so, uh, again, increasing that pressure, Man. bringing a rook into the mix. So now, obviously, the queen doesn't want to take it, and you can't take it with this one because, well, then that would, the queen would get taken. So uh, then he moves the rook there. But all of his pieces are just jumbled up. They're they're all blocked, blocking each other. And uh, so, if you look at material right now, uh, white is listed as having uh, one point material advantage. Uh, but Paul Morphy says, "Okay, uh, this uh, this pin is so essential. We're gonna get we're gonna get that knight uh, with my rook, not not with the bishop, because now we maintain the pin." Mm -hmm. there and now you can bring in that additional rook into the attack yep so and yeah what is what's what, so black's like okay well the only logical continuation here because i have this knight that would like to capture this back is to get out of the pin so then he does breaks the pin now uh again we're checking and then you know point you would think the sensible thing would obviously not to be to take it with the queen because you don't want to lose the queen. So there we go. We're going to take it with the knight. And then again, Paul Morphy just being in a league of his own. Uh, and 
<laughs> sacrifices the queen. Oh, this is, do you guys see it? So uh, uh, if you don't stop see the it. Yeah, stop the video for a second. Uh, if you want to try to find it yourself, what, what's going on here? Well, okay. So basically this queen is being sacrificed because if this knight takes, guess what? Boom. And that's exactly what happens. This lands here. And, and checkmate. Uh, that's checkmate. <laughs> it's checkmate. Oh. Now I will say this, Tom, this, um, I don't know if you've, I've had some more recent games where I've had this opportunity to do things with the coordination of the bishop and rook like this, usually yeah. on back ranks when there's pawns around. Uh, but this is like the coolest example of that. It really and is. After a queen sack, nonetheless, and a pin, I mean, just so many things, so many instructive uh, concepts in this one tiny game. Yeah, and I mean, the the thing that I really took away from, from memorizing the opera game was just how darn important it is to be uh, activating these pieces. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so, because you take this and you're you're going to get that rook, like, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. I mean, it puts your queen kind of out of position, like, and, and you've wasted all of your moves on your queen and your bishop, and they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're getting an attack launch, but you've done that and you've not, you haven't mobilized any of these pieces. I mean, are you going to win the game? Probably. You're so far ahead at that point. But not uh, in as few moves as Paul Murphy did. <laughs> nah, and you're not going to do it nearly as elegantly as he did it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, just the importance of, of bringing those pieces out. And I mean, that move there, I never, I, oh my gosh. Like, oh, man. To be, able to, to be at the level where you see that move and you're like, you know what, that, like, that pin, because that's what it is, right? It's, it's that pin that's developed from getting my bishop out there is so powerful that it's yep. worth sacrificing that minor piece for. And because look, I, both I'm, I'm not Morphe, but I, I've got to imagine like he didn't see the checkmate at this point, right? When yeah. He was making that move. He didn't see the checkmate. He just saw how powerful that pin was going to be. And we got we got a, a pin on the queen, a pin on the king. I mean, there's there's two pins going on here right now. And also look at the fact that how many, okay, you can say how much actual material someone has, but how much usable material do they have? Well, black doesn't have a rook or a bishop. So you tell me, I mean, even if, even if let's just chop off, you know, this rook or something like even right now, the, the usable material on the board is so far outweighed in white's favor. Yeah. And then you know once the once the castle happens, now they've gotten both their rooks into the game. Mm -hmm. Both both the rooks are in the mix, and so then it's it's trading off material because they can, because from the position of usable material, right? White has a huge advantage mm -hmm. and because of all this tempo, the lack of castling, the pins. Like it's it's so much pressure coming on the white side and i've got to imagine at this point in time morphe probably had an idea of what he was going to do yeah if he hadn't so. already um but yeah this uh this just turns into something just elegant right there so totally that's the opera game that's uh, the opera game guys if you're if you're gonna memorize one game in your entire life pick this game yep and it's short come on it's not too bad it's not too bad so well thanks right. guys thank you We'll see you next time.